Hi everyone, I'm back with another tutorial for you. This time I'm going to be showing you the techniques on how to draw a galaxy girl. So I shared this galaxy girl a few times on some journal flips and things and I also shared with you some other galaxies that I um, created on Instagram and various other places because I got into a bit of a I don't know, I got into a bit of a stage of, of painting galaxies and I just love them. And I even turned them into um, iPhone cases and cushions and things over on Society6. And I just am really passionately in love with painting galaxies. And um, some of you asked if I could share the tutorial on how to do it with you. And I said, of course I can. I don't mind at all. Um, so... This is said tutorial. I'll go through in a minute um, some of the techniques and things, um, sorry, some of the materials and things that um, ideally it'd be good if you could use. Um, but what I want you to do first is um, I want you to go away, go to Pinterest, go to Google, wherever you prefer to look at images, and I want you to search for galaxies and for cosmos because I want you to start to kind of have a look at um what exactly a galaxy is and what it looks like and start to get in your head some of the colors that you might like to use um you'll see that some are very black and inky blue and purple whereas others are quite light with yellows and greens and reds and oranges in and some galaxies have everything in so so either watch the rest of this video and then go away and do your research before you paint or pause this video now, go away, go and have a look at Pinterest, start setting up a night sky board for yourself and um, then come back and paint or watch the video first so you can get an idea of what we're going to be doing first. Entirely up to you but I do strongly encourage you to go our way and look at different cosmos first so you get an idea of colours. So let's crack on then. Then I'm going to turn the camera around and I'm going to talk about materials and get straight into the tutorial. Okay, so let's talk about um, the materials and some of the things that you're going to need. I apologise, it's a bit shadowy. It's very dark and wet and gloomy here in England and all the lights are on. Um, but let's not let that stop us. It's a good excuse to huddle in the warm by the radiator with a cup of tea and do some painting. So the very first thing you'll need is some watercolour paper. Now you are going to need watercolour paper um, rather than any other paper because we're going to be getting our paper very very wet and only watercolour paper is going to be able to handle and take the amount of wetness that we're going to put on our paper. So it doesn't matter what size you're going to use, I'm actually going to go with the big um, A4 size but you use whatever watercolour paper you have got on hand, it doesn't matter. So you will also need a pencil, I'm going to be using just a, a normal HB pencil. You also need a rubber so you can rub out any mistakes that you make or anything you're not happy with. Optional is a blending stump. If you don't have a blending stump you can use your finger. You will also need a set of watercolour paints. My watercolour paints are by Windsor and Newton and I've got the full range of colours. I'm showing you those. You don't have to use posh expensive ones if you don't want to. Um, you can see that mine are well worn, well used because I use watercolour a lot. Um, you can use any anything that's wet and watery um, basically. I wouldn't recommend using acrylic inks, um, sorry acrylics, but you, you need to use either like watercolours or you know children's paints, you know like watercolour paints ish. Um, you don't have to spend a fortune on them if you don't already have them, but you will need watercolours. You will need some sort of recyclable packaging like this that you can use um, the wells to put things in. You will need some bleach. This is just your ordinary everyday bleach that you might put down the toilet. I just want to stress that when you're using the bleach 
um, you know, obviously you're all adults, hopefully, but if you are children watching this or whatever, um, or just want everybody to be safe, um, I use the recyclable container so that I can pour the bleach into here and then I can throw this away. Um, be careful of your skin, obviously bleach melts the skin. Be careful of your clothes because you don't want to bleach any of your clothes and just be careful of fumes and ventilation. But we're not going to be using much bleach at all but I just want you to be safe everybody. You'll need some cotton buds. That's what we're going to use with the bleach. You'll need some salt, just some every everyday salt will be fine. You can either use table salt or the coarse sea salt, um, it doesn't really matter. You'll need some tissue, either some like kitchen towel, facial tissue or loo roll, will be fine. You'll need some water. Now I have two pots of water on the go at any time. I have one that's clean water and one that's dirty water. So I wash my brushes out in one and then I pick up clean water from the other. So I recommend you do, do the same. You'll also need an assortment of brushes. Don't have to be fancy brushes, just an assortment of brushes. And also an old toothbrush. Just an old toothbrush that you can use for painting. So brushes and water. You'll also need some white acrylic paint. I just use cheapy, cheapy, cheap, cheap. And then optional are some spray inks and glitter. Now these I use are the Cosmic Shimmer Mists and they are spray inks but they've also got mica powder in them so that gives them like a really nice glittery shimmery shine. Um, if you've got spray inks, you can use spray inks or dropper inks. Don't worry if you don't, this is an optional. If you want to add glitter or mica powder or shimmering powders, you can too. But these are these are optional. I will be using them in the tutorial, but if you don't have them, you don't have to. And that's everything you need. So, have fun. Let's crack on. I tear it out because as I said we're going to get our paper extremely extremely wet um, so that's why I do that so I'm just going to zoom in a little bit for you so you can see more of my paper and I've got my pencil and the first thing we need to do is draw um, or map out the outline for our face and our hair so you need to think about whether you're going to be going um, landscape or portrait um, because I'm filming this I'm going to do it landscape so that I can zoom in and do it all close up and you know you can see everything that I'm doing on the paper but if you want to do it portrait that's absolutely fine and I'm going to do it so that her hair is sort of really really flowy rather similar to the one that I showed you in my journal so the first thing we need to do is map out where our um, where our face is going to go and um, I'm this is going to be a very a very rough um, presumption that you already know how to draw a face um, faces can be round or oval or heart shaped um, so just kind of get a feel for how you want the face and where you want the face. So just start, um, obviously you need a bit of gap at the top for the hair, but just start free forming by drawing an oval. And I draw it a few, few times round until I get the feel for the shape of the face that I want. So I've got several, several lines there. And while it's like that, I then start to think about where I want the hair. And I'm just going to, if I go quiet, it's because I really do struggle to talk and draw at the same time. I'm very much an, an inward person when it comes to my painting. Okay, so I want her hair to kind of be flowing out across the side. So, and I also want it to sweep across her face. So I'm going to give her a bit of a side parting the top of her face so that would be halfway in her on her head 
but I want to give her a side parting so I'm going to do it just slightly over and I want some of the hair to come across her face so I'm just going to bring it down and sweep now her eyes her eyes will come about a third of the way down across there and I want the hair to kind of come across her eyes so I'm just roughly making two half shapes there so I want her hair to kind of come down and sweep across you know she's got really messy messy hair so do it really lightly with pencil I mean I'm doing it quite dark so that you can see on the camera but you know you can do it quite light so you can rub it out and then the other bit of the hair is going to come across to the side here now the girls that I draw aren't like really real or really realistic they're just kind of stylized so just bear that in mind and when you're drawing hair hair does not sit flat on the top of the head you always have a little bit above for the hairline depending of course on whether she's got straight floppy flat hair or whether she's got big frizzy curly hair like me um, but I'm just going to do it a little bit across and you know we experiment as we go along So I want her hair to go out or hmm. See, this is where I start to think I might have her hair come over rather than. So I might have her hair come outwards and off the page, as if she's sort of blowing in the wind. <laughs> so bring the other side down and round. Okay, so we need to think that if her hair is blowing up and over, we'll have hardly anything coming down here. So needs to she's windswept, windswept and wonderful. So lots of sketchy lines, lots of sketchy lines. And if her hair was coming round from behind her face, from behind her neck, let's put her neck in. So your neck comes just as well as the just as the chin starts to develop, that's where you want your necklines to come in. So just do sort of a curvy, curvy line. Start in, come out and curve back in and out again. Won't worry about the shoulders for now, just do her neck. So her hair, so if her hair was sweeping this way, it's going to come round and then it will come back out this way from the other side of her neck but I'm just going to make all of this her hair because her hair is just free flowing wild and crazy <laughs> she's wild she's crazy and her face is a little bit uneven so I'm just going to even her face up a little bit and you can just play around with it make it how you how you want to just bear in mind her features you don't need to put the features in her face yet um, we're just going to concentrate on the hair so when you've got it to how you like it I think I'm fairly happy with that I want you to remove the head that she's got under her hair there because we don't need that Do -do -do. so you just need to be left with her hair and not her head on the hairline so that's where your rubber comes in handy. You need a good quality rubber. And if you can, just rub away at some of your some of your pencil lines to make them a bit fainter if you've done them too dark. Don't worry, you know, I'm just trying to do that so that you can still see. And then what I want you to do is I want you to tidy up your face using your rubber. So get rid of all of those extra lines so you're just left with kind of a uh, very rough outline the face and make it as faint as possible it's almost so that you can't see it because you don't really want harsh lines in your in your final piece and you might find see I'm going to just rub that out and I'm going to just refine her face a little bit There we go, my face is just a little bit more refined. There we go. Okay. Almost there. Seem forever playing with it. 
Right, now we are ready to start painting. Okay, so just one thing I wanted to say is it doesn't matter if you've got dark and excess lines in the hair, but you don't want excess lines in the face because when you come to paint, um, you want to rub them out again because you don't want the lines to show through her skin tone. So that's just a word of comment there. So I'm going to zoom back out so you can see a bit more of, of my desk. My t-shirt's not billowing into the thing. Um, okay, so what you need to do is you need to have your, your your water and your brushes close at hand. They're just going to be slightly out of um, out of shot for you, but they are here, I can assure you. And you want your watercolours. You can get those out and have those have those to the side of you. And then you also want your tray. And what I want you to do is in your tray, I want you to pour a little bit of salt into, into one section and a little bit of bleach into another. And now, as I said, just be careful of what you're doing with the bleach and any fumes and anything like that. OK, so just be very careful and put those, put that to the side and it already stinks. So I'm going to have to open the window. OK. So now we're ready, we've got everything next to us and around us, we're ready to go. So we're going to be doing, um, for the hair, ignore the face and the features and the neck, ignore that. We are literally concentrating on the hair and the hair only. And we're going to be doing what is called a wet in wet technique. Um, I've lost my brush, oh there it is. It's called a wet in wet technique and... Basically, you need to relinquish any control about what the watercolours are going to do. You just need to let the watercolours do their own thing, okay? And for people that are quite, you know, precise with their work, that's quite hard to do sometimes, I know. So, just I'm telling you now, let go, let it all go, we're going to just get creative. So, I want you to take a clean brush, dip it in your clean water... Get it nice and wet and I want you to just wet the paper in the hair. So make sure the paper in the hair is nice and wet. And this is why we needed good watercolour paper. Because we're going to get wetter still. So make it nice and wet. Depending on the paper you might start to buckle a little bit. But... Make sure you stay in the lines because, this is very important with a wet in wet technique, anywhere that you've put water on your paper, when you put your wet watercolour onto it, it will all blend and merge in. Therefore, you do not want to get any water at this stage on your face because all your colours will start to blend in otherwise and you'll see exactly what I mean in a moment. <laughs> so next take one of your brushes doesn't really matter because I'm not being precise and let's start getting some colour so you think about your galaxies um, and what colours you primarily want in your galaxies um, and you would have done some sort of research on that so you just want to get your wet your wet brush into your watercolour and then you want to add it to your picture very randomly and as you can see the watercolour is starting to spread where there was water on our page okay this bit here is dry because I didn't put any water there at all so it's not spreading so now you can see what I meant about not making sure your face wasn't <laughs> making sure that your face was not wet okay so just please bear that in mind because I don't want you to get really upset if your, you know, if your face gets wet. So just randomly now, try and be quite random with it. Um, try not to be too prescriptive. I want you to just choose your colours. You can layer them up now. Just randomly choose your colours and start popping them onto, onto your hair. Um, 
as I say, try and be as random as you can, and just just let can let go, let can let the water and the watercolors go where they want to. Okay, just try not to worry about where they're going. You know, just let them do their own thing. Yes, some of them will get muddy, and I did that with my brush. <laughs> Um, yes, some of them will get a bit muddy, but we're not going to worry about that. We are not worried at all. Okie dokie. So just keep on going. I'm going to do a bit of this sped up and a bit of it real time with you. But I just want to get you, um, just want to get you started and on your way. Do, 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 do. The singing is free. <laughs> I always sing when I paint. Always fun okay so what i want you to do is I, I will i want you to carry on but what i want to show you now is using the bleach so if you take your take your cotton bud dip it into the bleach just be very careful and then i want you to touch it to the paper and watch the, what it does it just spreads your watercolor out and gives it a really cool technique so just experiment with that don't do too much at this stage just do a little bit of it and then just go back and you know just keep on layering make sure you use some black as well because our cosmos is really dark so get some blacks in there um, and watercolor when it dries goes a lot paler than when you than when you first did it so just bear that in mind but don't worry about it because when our picture is sorry guys I knocked the tripod a bit so if you see my um oh sorry if you see my tripod legs that's why sorry about that um I got excited <gasps> got terribly excited okay so <laughs> um so yeah your watercolor will pale as it dries but we're going to do lots and lots and lots of layers. Well, not lots of layers. We're going to do more layers um, once it's dried. So do not worry about it. I'm not worried. You shouldn't be worried. Okay, so as you can see, it's already starting to pale. But we'll sort that out when it's dry. So I'm going to put this into fast forward now. So it's just going to be more of me dabbing random watercolour. Um, in various places on the page and letting it merge into its own funky chicken so I'll pop that into um, into fast forward and then listen to some music because that's better than listening to me sing <laughs> Okay, so there we go. She's all filled in, um, really, really wet. Now what we can do is have a bit of fun. We're going to add some, add some bleach in random places. Just be careful with the bleach, as I say, and watch it have fun. Woohoo! Bleach only really works where the um, watercolor is really wet, and obviously it's bleach, so it does. A um, wow, awesome totally random folks remember totally random and that's what you want you want it random here we go so yeah the the bleach does bleach because it's bleach i know it's high tech stuff um the beat the bleach will bleach your paper and it also spread it out so bear that in mind so i've got a few bits of bleach in there 
and now what I want to do is take some of my salt and I want to round while this is wet you need to do this while the watercolour is wet don't let it dry okay so now I'm just randomly scattering salt over her hair doesn't matter where you go it's just going to be random and the salt does a couple of things um, when the salt first goes on it helps to um, push the watercolour around so that's the first thing it does the second thing the salt does is as it dries it absorbs some of the watercolour so this is where you start to get some of this really it's already taking effect some of this m really funky mottly effect that's what the salt does okay so now what you want to do just call it a day you want to just leave it in a vertical position you don't want to move it because this is really wet here it's just going to puddle and move so I want you to just leave it as it is let it totally dry and we'll be back next week to finish her off so don't touch her leave her where she is leave her to dry um, when she's dry obviously you can move her and then next week I'll be back to finish her off with you hopefully have fun with it so I hope you enjoyed that friends um, remember to let your watercolor dry nice and flat and leave it and I will see you next week for the rest of the tutorial